Uh, the next session, that's uh, session three, is on e-infrastructures boosting uh, education. So we will, uh, our panelists will be discussing uh, issues related on how the e-infrastructures would help or would support education in, uh, in the Arab world. And um, I would like to invite on stage Richard French, um, and he would be talking about is the global MLAN community ready to support uh, transnational education. Uh, Richard comes from TNE. He's a TNE business development manager uh, from the UK. Welcome. Great. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, first, I'd like to thank um, Asren for the opportunity to contribute to the conference. Um, so this afternoon, um, I'd like to talk about the opportunity that we at JISC see for um, NRENs from around the world to work together um, to support global international education. So I'm going to share some of our experiences in supporting international education before looking at some uh, emerging trends in that field and then um, identifying some of the challenges currently facing NRENs um, looking to work across national borders um, to support education and finally share some approaches um, which we've used uh, successfully um, in, to work in partnership with, with other NRENs. So, who are JISC? So, um, yeah, I'm the business, t &E business development manager at JISC, and JISC provides digital services and solutions uh, for the UK education sector. Um, so our work can be roughly grouped into three areas. Um, as a UK NREN, uh, we manage the Janet Network, um, we also act as a libia, libia, li um, library consortia and negotiate um, sector deals um, with publishers and, and also IT vendors as well. And um, we provide advice and guidance to universities and colleges in using technology. Um, so those are our core members, UK universities, colleges and, and skill provi uh, skills providers as well. And our vision for the UK is for it to be the most digitally advanced, um, higher and further education and research nation in the world. Now, historically, um, so almost all of our offerings were delivered exclusively within the UK. Um, however, in response to growing demand from UK universities, um, in 2014 we made the strategic decision to support our members internationally wherever they may want to work or, or would be operating now. And this means supporting their transnational education, or TNE. Um, but what do we mean by TNE? Um, so, what we've seen is as global international education increases in scope and scale, there's been some confusion about the terminology. So, in the UK, we use the term um, transnational education, uh, but you may be more familiar with uh, other terms such as cross border borderless or offshore education, or simply joint or double degree programmes. And the British Council earlier this year published um, a piece of work um, to try and provide some clarity on this issue of definitions and names, and their definition of transnational education is useful. So they define it as the mobility of higher education programmes and institutions slash providers across international borders. Um, so, but fundamentally, we're talking about uh, students seeking to gain a foreign qualification without moving from their country of, of residence. Um, but the British Council definition, definition is good because it reflects what we see as the multi-directional nature of T&E. Um, so in recent years, we're seeing a move away from, say, a more traditional model of country A uh, delivering education in country B to more where there's greater levels of mobility between those two countries. And also the British Council, you see this framework, um, and they've neatly divided the TNE activity into independent and, and collaborative. So to illustrate that, if we take the example of international branch campuses, this is essentially a satellite operation of uh, the parent institution in the UK, whereas a joint university is co-funded or co-developed um, in partnership between two institutions. Um, and again, we're seeing a trend more towards the, that collaborative type of activity in, in t and &E, which, which is good for universities because they help share the risk and cost of any initiative. So, 
ICT any important to universities. Um, so we know from anecdotal evidence and supporting with partners uh, and talking with our partners from around uh, the world that global TNE is, is growing at a, at a rate. Accurate data on TNE it, it isn't available because it's captured in countries differently and there's no uh, single global body that captures all the data and produces reports on it. But if we take the UK as an example, um, where we've got access to data on TNE activity, um, in the last decade we've seen the number of students studying in the UK, uh, studying for a UK qualification while based in another country, double. As you see from the graph, it's going in the right direction. And there are in fact 700,000 students studying for a UK qualification outside the UK. And this is almost double the amount of international students who are coming to the UK um, to study. So why do we think that TNE is, is relevant to uh, NRENS? Because we see reliable, high performance connectivity as, as fundamental to the successful delivery of TNE. and And we believe that improving that technology that underpins t &E, we can improve the student and staff experience, so their access um, to learning environments, both home and in the overseas um, operations. So above the network connectivity, we see this whole host of things being supported by that, um, sort of all aspects of the, the learning experience for the TNE and student. And it depends on that reliable, high performance connectivity, um, operating seamlessly between different countries and continents. And we want to focus on using the NREN, the, the network for education, uh, to support TNE. And we believe that the, the global community of NRENs cooperating and working effectively in partnership can meet the demands of supporting greater levels of TNE which are forecasted for the coming years. So why is this relevant to NRENs in uh, the ASREN region? Well, all indications are that TNE activity in the region is, is set to increase in the coming years. Um, we know that it's not just UK universities that have a presence here or partnerships here. We you know that the, the region has links to uh, lots of other places around the world. Now the information that I've got on the slide here is that we're aware it's a, only a partial picture um, of the TN activity. We know there's a lot more, more happening. Um, but again, if we take the example of uh, UK figures, which we're able to, to access, um, we approximate that there's about 50,000 uh, UK TNE students in the region. And they're generally, um, in Egypt there's about 18,000, uh, in Oman 17,000, in UAE 13,000, in Saudi Arabia 3,000. So if you look at Egypt, for example, that's, that's the fifth largest host country for UK TNE students in the world. Um, and what we've seen over three, the last three years is about a 35% increase um, in, in the number of UK TNE students. We know that the Egyptian government um, are, are currently in discussion um, with UUK, which is an organisation in the UK, um, to uh, finalise an agreement about um, establishing UK international branch campuses in Egypt. Um, so we see this as the number only increasing in the coming years. Um, so what JISC have been doing for a number of years, um, we've been working in partnership uh, with, with NRENs and commercial providers um, around the world to improve um, connectivity for TNE students and staff. Um, and that's been both on and off campus. Um, and uh, we just would like to use our experience in this area um, to work in par partnership with um, NRENs in the region um, to develop support for TNE over the coming years. So, sort of illustrate um, how we would like to work um, with NRENs in the, area, in, in the region. Um, I'd like to use the example of how we worked with CERNET, uh, the Chinese NREN. And we believe this approach can be adopted and replicated in the region. So uh, the Janet network in the UK had um, historic direct peering links with CERNET. And we established a strategic alliance with CERNET in December 2013. Um, and we were using the Orient Plus link, which was established by um, CERNET and JOMS. So after that strategic alliance, um, we were able to work in partnership with CERNET and provide support to UK universities operating in China. Um, so with CERNET, we offer a bespoke service 
uh, working with the universities on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we provide guidance on things like network performance testing, traffic engineering, service upgrades, and general uh, troubleshooting. Uh, we provide advice on negotiation contracts and uh, new contracts and also existing um, contracts. And subsequently, CERNET have developed a uh, VIP TNE service, which is available to UK and other uh, universities operating in China. Um, and this service includes things like port monitoring, uh, monthly reporting, um, and a 24 7 support desk. Um, I'll quickly just use the example of um, one UK university we worked with, which is Queen Mary's University of London. They have a number of partners in China, and they were having problems with their students accessing the VLE. So we firstly uh, went and worked with CERNET to um, uh, do some preferential routing of the traffic back through that Orient Plus um, link, and that helped with some of the partnerships, but there was one where the students were accessing it off campus, where they were in a hotel or wherever it may be, and that was then those those sites were connected to the local commercial um, internet provider. So what we did there, we we established a peering link with those commercial providers, and the result was that the students were able to um, access the VLE um, more effectively. I'm running out of time, so I will briefly. The other thing I wanted to highlight, and this is a, a really important piece of work, which was just established this year. Um, and uh, so JISC is, uh, has helped establish a um, special interest group looking at transnational education, which is made up of NRENs. Um, this was established in February this year, um, and the group aims to address some of the common challenges, and develop services and services packages to support TNE, and also to harmonise country uh, approaches and NREN um, collaboration to ease the delivery of TNE globally. So there's a couple of um, uh, challenge areas which we've, we've looked at. There, there's TNE data, as, you, as I saw at the beginning, you know, it's quite difficult to get a picture of what TNE activity is happening in these different countries, and that could help guide where our support should be. Also, the, the kind of the strategic challenge is looking at global TNE policies. So how do we develop consistent policies to support TNE as NRENs? Um, there's uh, the operational challenge, um, so about interoperability, measurement, and, and you know, what potential service bundle could look like. And then there's tools and toolkits and resources. So what would we need to develop to help us share information? So those are the challenge areas. So this group, as I said, is only formed earlier this year. We don't have the answer to that question, but we are open to members. So if you're interested in joining, just come and find myself and my colleague, uh, Bai Wang, and we'll happily provide more information. Um, if you want to find more information on the um, special interest group, that's the link there. You can also go to the JISC website where we've got some case studies. I've got a link on the next slide. Um, okay. So I'll, f I'll finish there really. Just saying that um, you know, we're, if you're interested in developing support for TNE, then uh, we at JISC are happy to help and provide um, you know, details examples of how we've done it and support you. Um, myself and my colleague Dr. Bai Wang will be around uh, for the next couple of days, so do come and find us and speak to us if you're interested, but thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, um, and we can take a few questions here, uh, or we can do it at the end, but if anybody has a quick question. Okay, and then we're going to move on now um, uh, to uh, Muhammad Zayed um, from the um, Egyptian e-learning university. He will, he will be presenting on behalf of uh, the president of the Egyptian e-learning university, uh, Dr. Yasser, Yasser Dakruri, Dakruri, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, the initiative on innovation learning model to quality STEM teachers. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. And uh, I would like to thank the, uh, the session chair and uh, other colleagues uh, for giving me the chance to start earlier because of some other commitments. And uh, I apologize, sincerely ap apologize for uh, Ms. Suzanne Samir for uh, taking your, <laughs> your turn. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, 
I can see that uh, the conference has been uh, focusing on infrastructure development and how to improve uh, the enabling factors of getting more communication, getting more connected with, uh, with others. Uh, I will st during this uh, presentation, I will speak about, uh, let's call it an application of how to use infrastructure to provide more access to education through uh, the Egyptian e-learning university innovative learning model and how this model uh, is planned to be used uh, to qualify uh, STEM teachers or STEM education teachers uh, in order to prepare them to transfer knowledge to more and more generations uh, in the years to come. Uh, I will start by like an institutional framework of the university. Uh, the Egyptian e-learning university has been uh, has started uh, actually based on the presidential decree number 233 for the year 2008 to be the first uh, e-learning university or the first university to provide higher education opportunities through e-learning and ICT. Uh, the main uh, objectives of uh, the Egyptian e-learning e university is to provide quality learning, to provide flexible uh, opportunities or access to flexible learning opportunities, also to qualify uh, high quality graduates equipped with the 21st century uh, ICT skills and other transversal skills and also to represent an e-learning research hub that could help, uh, let's say, face or uh, overcome some of the challenges that we face in Egypt because of very crowded higher education system. The current program for this academic year includes three main faculties, Faculty of Information Technology, Faculty of Business Administration, and uh, Faculty of Educational Studies. And uh, all of these faculties include uh, something like nine or, or ten uh, programs that vary between undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. Uh, we plan to open some future programs like math communication, like engineering and technology, like languages and translation, like economics and political sciences, and a school, a school of law in the near future. Uh, what we do uh, at ELU is actually using ICT tools and ICT infrastructure to uh, connect students from different uh, geographical locations uh, into our learning systems so they can access materials, access uh, learning sessions, access virtual classrooms. So uh, our ultimate objective is to provide accessible and flexible higher education opportunities. Also, this kind of educational opportunities uh, best suits people who are adult learners, uh, especially uh, postgraduate studies because of their uh, occupied schedules and uh, they are not fully dedicated for uh, learning and uh, pursuing uh, postgraduate degrees. So, this flexible opportunities uh, of edu to education uh, through uh, e-learning systems and e-learning technologies actually uh, is uh, is the best match or the perfect match for people with busy schedules. Uh, this is the educational model that we use. We, uh, we, are, we depend on three main pillars. Face-to-face -face communication, especially for undergraduate students uh, in the practical parts, using lectures and practical sessions, uh, within learning centers across uh, different geographical areas in Egypt. So we have like a learning center in Cairo, another learning center in Tanta in the middle of the Delta, and another uh, learning center in uh, Upper Egypt in Asyut University, and we are planning to open another one in Alexandria and uh, one, uh, one more in uh, far, uh, far Upper Egypt in uh, Pina. Uh, so for, for the activities that need face-to-face face -face communication or hands-on training, uh, we it take place uh, within the learning centers. The, the other pillar, which is uh, distance learning uh, tools. We use learning management system to provide uh, the learning materials and all learning activities to students. We communicate with them uh, weekly, on a weekly basis, using virtual classroom systems. And the assessment, or let's, uh, let's call it self-assessment activities, takes place using e-assessment e e tools. 
but according to the legal requirements within uh, Egypt, uh, according to the Supreme Council of, of the Egyptian Universities, final exams have to be written and supervised during sessions, so students are uh, obliged to come uh, once every semester to take the final exam at the end of the semester. The third pillar that is very important to students and very important in the e-learning industry as a whole is the support system that we provide students with. Uh, we have technical support and administrative support available. Uh, for technical support, they are available like 24 by 7. We have shifts. Uh, during the day, so students can access support, technical support, especially 24 by 7 at, at any time using email or using the ticketing system available on the uh, uh, university portal. For the administrative and academic support, students can meet administ administration and can meet academic uh, representatives and lecture and instructor, things like that. They can uh, uh, meet with them uh, at least once every week in each subject materials that they are enrolled in. Uh, we use, as you can see, we use uh, different, different uh, tools uh, for the teaching and learning services. We have learning management systems, we use uh, e-courses, or, or we have an e-course for each subject that is uh, delivered or uh, taught at each uh, the academic program. We, all, we also use video conferencing, virtual classroom system, documents and videos uh, library, and an e-assessment system. For student support services, we rely on online, an online portal, e-admission and registration portal, e-mailing system, internet access within uh, university locations, and e-grade book that student can access anytime to check their own performance. Uh, for the university administrative management, uh, we use university uh, management information system and students database, document workflow, and a financial management system. Okay, let's go to the main uh, idea of uh, this presentation, which is STEM education. We are proud to be a part of uh, a project, a big project, that is a cooperation uh, between uh, several universities in Egypt and in the uh, European uh, Union. Uh, this project is funded uh, through Erasmus Plus program and uh, it aims to developing a new generation of STEM teachers in Egypt capable of providing adequate and innovation, innovative teaching in science, technology, math and engineering. We believe that these sciences are the locomotive for any kind of development and for, for any kind of growth. And therefore, we aim to equip teachers with, the, with this kind of education and knowledge in order to transfer it and use it and blend it within their teaching and instructional uh, activities. Okay, uh, let's have a look on uh, the content of uh, the courses to be quick. First, we, we need to, to, uh, to respect our partners, Ain Shams University, Nile University, Alexander University, Glasgow Caledonian University in uh, the UK, KTH, Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, the Ministry of Communication in Egypt, Ministry of Education in Egypt, Masr al Khair, which is an NGO that works in human development, and Latvia University, uh, also from Europe. Um, the main outcomes of the project is to uh, complete or implement a survey, which is already done, a survey and benchmarking report of STEM practices around the world, from the UK, from the US, from Europe, from the Arab region. Uh, also to uh, create higher education diploma program in STEM education, to develop a STEM resources center for teachers to practice how to do science projects with their students, also, uh, some training uh, and prepare some training modules for the instructors and uh, finally to accredit the diploma program within Egypt and within the EU. Here's like a, a, a quick structure of the courses. So we have some core courses to equip, equip teachers with the main basic ideas, introduction to STEM education, learning theories, managing multimedia projects, e-learning technologies, engineering design processes, technological tools for teaching and learning. These are the core modules that every teacher will uh, study. Uh, for two specialities, science or math, 
they will study project-based learning in the field of science, science learning resources in the field also science, for the math, project-based learning, and uh, also math learning resources. So what we, we need to do is to try to equip teachers with the needed uh, qualification, needed skills, in order to start embedding the STEM education methodology into their instructional activities within classrooms for the primary level and the preparatory level in uh, education uh, in Egypt. Uh, finally, I would like to invite you to uh, attend uh, and submit uh, some proposals for uh, abstracts, for some paper or presentations at our uh, at ELU next uh, conference in uh, June, which uh, which is held under the name uh, STEM Education and Knowledge Society, and you can easily access the website via icel.elu.edu.eg. Thank you very much and have a nice conference. Any questions? Thank you, Muhammad, uh, for uh, your presentation. And I would like to call next uh, uh, Suzanne Samir. Uh, Suzanne um, is the head of educational services section, uh, Bibliotheca Alexandria uh, in Egypt. And she's going to be talking about the role of libraries dissemination of technology in the education process. Hello, everybody. Uh, I will speak today about the role of libraries in education and how it's important to include the libraries in the end So I will go quickly to, uh, through the history of libraries. The most ancient one is the Library of Alexandria. And we all, all know how much uh, the, this role of uh, the, the, this library was very creative to create the basics of all science. Also, the one of Pergamon uh, was very, very known and uh, had rivalry with the, the uh, Library of Alexandria too. Also, Bet al Hikma, or the House of Wisdom uh, in Arabic. Uh, had many uh, work of uh, translations and uh, scientists well known. So um, through the previous slides, I, uh, we can see the strong relation between education, research, and libraries. So we know now that qualified education is created through qualified libraries, as seen. Therefore, library's mandate is to provide knowledge to all people at all times for free. And in order to make this, we have many categories of libraries to serve all categories of uh, public. So we have national libraries, public libraries, academic libraries, school libraries, special libraries, and all those libraries are working to uh, serve the uh, general public and academics and also uh, students. Uh, so in Egypt, as uh, with reference to the uh, library directory statistics, we have 1,342 public libraries and 482 academic libraries and 527 special libraries. All those libraries are, must be connected to serve the entrance uh, goals. And we uh, have in the Library of Alexandria implemented one of the UNESCO programs for uh, information literacy that uh, in, um, in order to help uh, students and researchers to, uh, to give them the opportunities to have access to knowledge. Uh, this, is what, this was in 2003 uh, that we, uh, we were involved uh, we were involved in the Library of Alexandria with this uh, program, and then we had Alexandria Proclamation in 2005 uh, with the uh, uh, Lifelong Learning Beacon and Information Society. Then we uh, began our uh, teaching and learning uh, methods for the general public in the library and students through many uh, programs for general public, for students, uh, one of uh, the statistics for tw uh, 2017 we had rec received in our programs 1,300 undergraduate and postgraduate students. Also, we have 
Egyptian and non-Egyptian students uh, include, uh, included the, in the, those programs. We have offered two trainings for uh, teachers and uh, from uh, public and private schools. Also, uh, information professionals were, inclu were uh, included in our programs, and we served uh, 302 information professionals this year. And therefore, we have uh, to extend and develop our mission. We have created an e-learning platform this year in uh, January two seven, uh, 2017. Uh, we have now uh, 506 accounts. We have 20 modules uh, through the platform and in, in three languages, Arabic, English, and French. It's a free uh, e-learning platform through a public library, and this is uh, very new to a public library. Uh, in this uh, platform, the courses are oriented to help all kinds of users. There are orientation sessions, the, for general public, there are intermediate level concerning the information literacy and how to get accurate information, and advanced level for the researchers. For example, we are working now with the Association of Ferdinand de Research and uh, Suez Canal and the University of Alexandria to, uh, on the implementation of a new course about the Suez Canal history, and this is for researchers. We have uh, to implement also. Um, a diploma in the de l'information et de la in collaboration and partnership with the, the BNF, the National, uh, National Library of uh, France, uh, and uh, University of Senghor, and uh, the NSIC in France. So now the library is uh, in a transition between the old uh, the old uh, signs, and now we, we are speaking about the virtual services. So we can't uh, speak about how many books we have in the library. We must speak about how many services we, get, we can have uh, through a library and virtual services to, be, uh, to, to have more uh, public. So we must be prepared for this generation. Uh, the goal uh, and education is the fourth goal of the UNESCO 2030 agenda, and this for this. Uh, therefore, we have implemented the e-learning uh, platform, so we can um, we can go through this platform to many users. And therefore, too, we have to include the libraries in the end And we have, I don't know if you, we can say that we have and learn. So, National Libraries Education and Research Networks. So, the levels of the endless will be strong infrastructure, e infrastructure, and high connectivity. So, we, connecting with other libraries will allow us to have more education programs than, than we have now, and we, to spread also the experiences of all the libraries in the region and Africa and all worldwide. So, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. If you'd like to add some more, you still have some time. Any questions for Suzanne on the libraries? Yes, please. Thank you, Suzanne, for the presentation. Did you thought about using Koha as a open source for library, which is more convenient than Moodle because Moodle is library system? But Koha is more open source. Yeah, but I'm saying Koha more associated with libraries. Uh, it's quite well known uh, for universities, so uh, people are able to use Moodle, so that's why. My understanding is that these are two different things. Yes, but I'm saying Koha is more associated with... Koha is a library uh, search so engine and repository. Yeah. Yes, please. For library, for library, for cataloging, yeah. 
certain. You are using which application? Here it's not. Uh, it's virtual. We have in uh, Valeria or Valeria, it's virtual. But uh, here it's not about uh, Valeria. Yeah, this is about the system. Wooden is yeah. the system, like the black one, it's, like, that's like why, the others, the deep one, the red space. In Valeria, it's not about Valeria, it's virtual. What I'm saying, for library, for Valeria, and search, you are using virtual? Yes. Yeah. It's open source also. Other questions on libraries in Egypt? Yes, please. Do you have a license Any other questions? We still have uh, maybe a minute. Okay, well, thank you very much, um, uh, Suzanne. And now we move on to um, Rami Zaki Skander. And um, Rami is the Director of National E-Learning Center, Supreme Council of Universities in Egypt. And he will be talking to us about the e-learning in the Egyptian public universities overview and future perspectives. Salkir, I'm Rami Skander, I'm the director of the Council of the University of Egypt. Today, I'm going to thank the President of the Council and thank Dr. Yusuf for the great presentation in the meeting. I'm going to talk about the time, of course. هو أفضل خالص. لا خلاص وفدا خلاص هو أنا بتكلم مع الشاشة. yeah but it's a bit yeah sensitive. طبعا هكلم مع بل ما يخلص الموضوع. المركز القومي للتعلم التروني بدأ فكرته من حدود 2004-2005. ابتدينا ننشئ بنيه تحتيه في 22 جامعه انشانا اكثر من 22 مركز تعليم الكتروني في كل جامعه مصريه. المراكز التعلم الالكتروني دي هي المسؤوله عن انتاج المقالات الالكترونيه. المركز القومي اللي انا بديره هو المسؤول عن الكواليتي بتاع الكورسات عشان احنا اهم حاجه قبل ما ننشر يكون عندنا ستاندرز وكواليتي نشتغل عليها عشان تخرج الكورسات على مستوى عالي. الفيجن بتاعتنا طبعا ان احنا عايزين نبقى بيت خبره على في التعليم الالكتروني على المستوى المحلي والاقليمي والدولي ونخدم المجتمع مش الطلبه بس بحيث ان احنا نكون في استفاده من المركز القومي للتعليم الالكتروني. زي ما الشاشه طبعا بتقول دلوقتي ان احنا زي ما قلت قبل كده ان احنا انشانا 22 مركز انتاج مقالات الالكترونيه عندنا تقريبا فرق عمل بيصلوا في حدود 300 فرد. مكونين من 22 من 44 انستراكشن ديزاينر مصمم تعليمي وجرافيك ديزاينر وديفلوبر ومنسق تدريب اهم حاجه عندنا ان احنا ندرب اعضاء التدريس والطلبه على ازاي يديروا العمليه التعليميه في الاي ليرنينج احنا ممكن نعمل اي ليرنينج كتير وممكن نعمل كورسات كتيره بس عدم كفايه استاذ او عضو هيئه التدريس انه يستخدم نظام اداره التعلم ممكن يعمل فشل كبير في التعليم الالكتروني ويمكن دكتوره سوزان برضه كانت معايا دلوقتي مشاهد كان في سؤال بخصوص الموديل احنا فعلا بنستخدم موديل وكل اعضاء التدريس في الجامعات المصريه بتستخدم الموديل وحاولنا كان بلاك بورد حاول يخش معانا ان هو يستخدم بلاك بورد ونطبقه على جميع اعضاء التدريس في الجامعات المصريه بس التعاقدات خفنا ان هي تختلف فتره نيجي ندربهم سنتين ثلاثه وبعد كده يتلغي التعاقد نرجع تاني للموديل فتقريبا اعضاء التدريس في مصر والطلاب حتى الموديل بالنسبه لهم واضح وبيستخدموه بقالهم 10 سنين تقريبا فالدنيا بالنسبه لهم اسهل شويه وهو طبعا اوبن سورس يعني دي فكره ان احنا بنستخدمه اكتر في الشغل بتاعنا يعني. انشانا برضو مكتبه وسائط رقميه ودي كانت فكرتها جديده ويمكن اللينك بتاعها موجود فوق المكتبه ديت طبعا بعيد عن المكتبه الاسكندريه يعني دي حاجه ثانيه لوحدها خالص 
احنا دايما بنشوف عضو هيئه التدريس بيكون عنده مجموعه برزنتيشن مجموعه فيديوهات مجموعه ساوندز بس كل دكتور في جامعته اللي بيستفاد منه الطلبه بتوعه بس احنا فتحنا المكتبه دي لكل اعضاء التدريس يرفعوا اي ماتيريال زي فيديوهات زي بي دي اف ايا كان ايه الملف اللي عنده مهم بحيث كل الطلبه المصريه وعلى فكره بتخدم العالم العربي كله والعالمي كله احنا فتحنا للعالم كله مجانا مش مش طلبه المصريين بس يعني فدي كانت فكره كويسه قلنا نستفاد منها ونفيد فيها المجتمع طبعا احنا بنعمل ورك شوب تقريبا سنه والفرق العمل واعضاء التدريس بحيث بندربهم على الموديل وازاي بندربهم برضو كمان الفرق العمل على الانتاج الاحدث في ونضع معايير جديده كل سنه بحيث تتماشى مع الاتجاه العالمي ودي يمكن اللي بتخلي فكرنا ومقاراتنا والقصات بتاعتنا متغيره انا هحاول <تصفيق> خلاص طبعا زي ما قلت من شويه ان احنا بنستخدم ليرنج ماس سيستم اللي هو الموديل لان هو زي ما قلنا اوبن سورس وبقى لنا 10 سنين اعضاء التدريس بتشتغل عليه صعب انتقل نقله اخرى خاصه احنا دلوقتي بننتقل يمكن في اخر شريحه او اخر شريحه حضراتكم بننتقل لايه دلوقتي لشيء جديد برضو اللايف سايكل بتاعت انتاج الكورسات بتاعتنا احنا مش بننتج كورسات كل دكتور بيجي ينتج بمزاجه والمحتوى بتاعه لا احنا بنجيب المحتوى بتاعنا بندي اويرنس كده للاعضاء التدريس عن التعليم الالكتروني بشكل عام مع كده بناخد المحتوى بنقيمه من اثنين اساتذه من جامعات مختلفه مفترض ان هم ما يعرفهاش اصلا بيقيموا المحتوى المحتوى جيد ويستحق ان هو ينتج كمقرر الكتروني فبننتجه بعد كده من خلال فرق العمل الموجوده في جامعته بحيث ان احنا ما نتابعوش بعد كده بيحصل تدريب زي ما قلنا للطلبه اعضاء التدريس ان هم ازاي يستخدموا الاي ليرنج والنظام اداره التعلم عشان نحقق النجاح اللي احنا عايزينه في الجامعات المصريه هنا او احنا في المركز القومي اي مقرر بننتجه بيستخدم في ال 22 جامعه يعني مش لازم مقرر انت في جامعه القاهره يشتغل بس في جامعه القاهره لا احنا ما بنكررش الكورس تاني بس بنقدر نشغله اكتر من مره يعني ممكن مقرر يشتغل 22 مره في 22 جامعه فدي من الحاجات برضو الكويسه اللي احنا بنحاول نشتغل عليها احنا تقريبا انتجنا اكتر من 700 اي كورس فول اي كورس لمختلف القطاعات العلميه طبعا احنا استخدامهم اكتر وصل لاكتر من 4000 مره زي ما قلت انا بكرر الكورس مره وقيمه ثلاثه هو كورس واحد تقريبا احنا عدينا في حدود 800000 ستودنتس ان احنا شغلنا 800000 طالب تقريبا سنويا بنعدي يعني ابتدينا نوصل لحدود من 300000 لنص مليون طالب سنويا ان احنا بنشتغل عليهم ويمكن الانفراستراكشر بتاعتنا احنا شغالين ما اشتغلناش حتى هذه اللحظه كلاود بس بالنسبه لنا بنشتغل على سيرفرات شبكه الجامعات المصريه وحتى لما حاولنا نتواصل مع موديل نفسها بره قلنا لهم احنا بنعدي بنص مليون قالوا لنا ازاي انتوا بتعدوا بنص مليون احنا ما حصلتش قبل كده في حته ان حد بيعدي بنص مليون طالب على السيرفرات بس احنا الحمد لله في شبكه الجامعات المصريه قدرنا نحقق العدد الكبير ده طبعا احنا تقريبا وصلنا لحوالي 6000 عضو هيئه تدريس بيطبقوا الكورسات دي سنويا وده عدد كويس بالنسبه للشغل. انشانا الفتره دي السنه دي يمكن اول منصه مفتوحه وسائل الانتشار للمقاطع الالكترونيه اي جي موكس هو برضه اللينك بتاعها موجود فوق هي لسه احنا بنرفع دلوقتي عليها كورسين عملنا تو كورسز واحد خاص بالتمريض لصفات اوليه والثاني خاص بالحاسب الالي. وهو مقدمه في الحاسب الالي ويمكن اقتسامها النهارده اللي هي محو الاميه الرقميه وده يمكن ها احنا بنزق ده لمحو الاميه الرقميه ان اي حد هيدخل عليه هيقدر يتعلم حاسب الي حتى الاسفات الاوليه اي شخص فينا ممكن يحتاج لاسفات اوليه. المنصه دي المفترض ان هي اكاديميه هترفع عليها كل الكورسات بتاعتنا برضه تخدم العالم كله مجانا بس هدفنا برضه حاجه ثانيه غير الاكاديمي ان هي بنخدم المجتمع بنحاول نشوف ايه الكورسات اللي تخدم المجتمع في الزراعه في الصناعه في الاسعافات في الكمبيوترز يعني مش عايزين كله يبقى اكاديمي حتى هنعمل فيها كمان تجارب علميه بعيدا عن الكورسات بحيث ان اي حد عنده تجربه علميه يقدر يعرضها عليه والعالم كله يستفاد منها. يمكن آه دكتور احمد حسن كان يتكلم في اللقاء الاولاني بتاعه الانجلش فور لايف احنا انتجنا تو كورسز للانجلش فور لايف الكورسات دي احنا بنتعلم بيها اللغه الانجليزيه زي ما هو قال عشان سوق العمل الطلب عندنا شاطرين بس اللغه ممكن تكون مشكله بالنسبه لهم فعملنا تو كورسز انجلش فور لايف دول بيتعلم بيعلموا اللغه الانجليزيه من المواقف الحياتيه مش مجرد جرامر والشكل التقليدي بتاع تعليم اللغه لا هو مختلف شويه حقوق الانسان ده مقرر جديد احنا بننتجه حاليا بننتجه حاليا مقرر حقوق الانسان ده هيبقى كله اي ليرنينج فول اي كورس 
مش هيبقى في كتاب مع الطالب هو هيكون ليه كورس بيفتحه على الانترنت والحاجه الثانيه هيكون في فيس تو فيس يعني هنشتغل نظام بريد ليرنينج بس ما فيش اي كتب ولذلك هنعتمد الاعتماد كلي على الانترنت فلو ما عندنا مشكله في الانترنت او في الانفراستراكشر ممكن تسبب لنا مشكله كبيره واعتقد هو يمكن موضوع المؤتمر النهارده انتجنا مجموعه كورسات طبعا اكاديميه الشرطه مؤسسات تعليميه زي مصر الخير كنا بنهتم دايما ان احنا نتواصل مع طلاب وزاره التعليم والتعليم اللي هم من ابتدائي واعدادي وثانوي بحيث ان احنا يطلعوا لنا عارفين اي ليرنينج مش طالعين ما يعرفوش حاجه عن اي ليرنينج وبعد كده نتصدم بشكل جديد ما يقدروش يتعاملوا معاه. دي سيمبلز من الكورسات بتاعتنا احنا طبعا الكورسات بتاعتنا بتشتغل موبايل ليرنينج في الوقت الحالي في اخر ثلاث سنين كده ننتج بنظام باسر تولز اللي هي ارتيكوليت ستوري لاين ده الستايل بتاعنا بيكون فيها مجموعه اساسيات وستاندرز معينه اللي هو ليرن واكتيفيتي وكويز وجلوسري وسامري وبعض المصادر الاسرائيليه اللي ممكن نتعامل معاها بره واليو ار ال يطلع بره ويشوف يزود معلوماته ويسري معلوماته في نفس المجال. ااا مفيش اي حاجه بنقدر نعملها من غير ما نعمل تقويم ليها فاحنا تقريبا سنويا بنعمل تقويم لاعضاء التدريس والطلاب عشان نعرف اذا كان احنا الشغل بتاعنا بيحقق نجاح او بيجد فشل بنحاول نعدله على طول. ااا الفيجن بتاعتنا دلوقتي طبعا احنا فرق العمل بتاعتنا مهما انتجت عمرها ما هتنتج كورسات الجامعات كلها. بدانا بالفعل بتدريب اعضاء التدريس في بعض الجامعات كبايلوت. ابتدينا يمكن بجامعة المنصورة في كلية تمريض وكلية طب أسنان اللي هم بعيد عن الكمبيوتر خلاص عشان نتأكد إن الدكاترة هتعرف تنتج ولا لأ، استخدمنا أسرة تولز جديدة اسمها أوفيس ميكس تتحط على الباور بوينت اللي أعضاء التدريس كلها بتشتغل بالباور بوينت احنا كلنا بنشتغل بالباور بوينت، بنحط قايمة جديدة اسمها أوفيس ميكس بيقدر يسجل محاضرته ويمكن أنا شفت من شوية كان في حد بيعرض حاجة فيها فليبت كلاس روم وهي دي فكرتنا إن احنا نعرض المحاضرات بتاعتنا قبل ما نروح المحاضرة بحيث المحاضرة نفسها بنمارس فيها العلم مش بنتلقى منها العلم. فده فكر جديد والدكاترة فعلا التزمت وفعلا ابتدت تنتج كورسات معانا. برضو ان احنا طبعا الفكر بتاعنا برضو كله اغلب اعضاء التدريس اللي هيبتدوا ينتجوا معانا بعد كده هنرفع على موكس وموكس ده اللي هو اي جي موكس اللي احنا المنصة اللي احنا انشأناها. اي جي موكس دي مرفوعة على كلاود طبعا مايكروسوفت اي عدد مش هتفرق معانا ملايين يخشوا عليها برضو مش هتفرق معانا. احنا طبعا بنحاول ندرب اعضاء التدريس على البلندد ليرنينج. انا خلاص فاضل شريحة واحدة خلاص. ااا اخر حاجة بس احنا طبعا بنوصي بالاهتمام بالبنية التحتية سواء في الجامعات المصرية او في مصر كلها. ااا محتاجين ان كل طالب كل شخص في مصر يكون عنده انترنت يقدر يحصل على الانترنت بسعر رخيص وبسرعة عالية عشان نحقق الهدف بتاعنا من غير انترنت ما فيش تعليم الكتروني واعتقد ما فيش مكتبه وما فيش اي حاجه الانترنت لو وقف عندنا في اي دوله اعتقد هتبقى الدوله فيها مش شايفه اي حاجه يعني. آه شكرا واسف للطول. <تصفيق> في اسئله؟ عربي؟ <تصفيق> اوكي. <تصفيق> ليجي موكس عموما احنا بنرفع كل الكورسات بتاعتنا على منصه مفتوحه للعالم كله. بعضها المجتمع هيستفاد منه ان هو هيخش يشوفها براحته، بعضها الدكتور اللي عايز يطبق المقرر بتاعه ويبقى نعمل له جروبس وبعد كده ناخد درجات ويبقى في تقارير عن كل حاجه بيعملها عشان يقدر يدي درجات عليها، دي خاصه بالمجلس على الجامعات هيبتدي يحققها العضو هيبتدي يبقى احنا شغالين في اتجاهين، حتى ال 700 كورس هنختار منهم في حدود 300 او 400 كورس اللي هم المهمين هنرفعهم على اي جي موكس بعد كده. هو هو كل كورسات المكس على جامعات والجامعات هي فولي كورس كامله يعني لو حصل اي حاجه ومحد الطلبه مش قادر تروح الجامعه هتتفتح الكورسات دي فولي كورس. انا تمام هقول لحضرتك على حاجه احنا طبعا يمكن بس دي عايزه وقت شويه احنا في تعليم مفتوح في مصر يمكن اغلقناه من حوالي سنتين فتحناه دلوقتي بنظام جديد اسمه التعليم الالكتروني المدمج او التعليم المدمج بلندد ليرنينج ده من العالم كله يعني 
متاكد ان الفولي كورس او التعليم الالكتروني بشكل كامل مش هيحقق النتيجه اللي احنا محتاجينها ويمكن كل الدول الفرنكوفونيه اللي احنا رحنا معاها وفرنسا وبيروت وكل الدول تقريبا اللي عدينا عليها كلهم عندهم نفس المشكله بلين ليرنينج اهم من الفول اي كورس اللي انا هشتغل اي ليرنينج بشكل كامل. فاحنا دلوقتي بالنسبه لمجلس اعلى الجامعات احنا خطوه ان احنا بنحاول الناس كلها تعرف البلين ليرنينج الاول وان في حاجه اسمها تعليم الكتروني القواعد عندنا والقوانين بيبقى صعب ان احنا نعتمد ان الطالب في مصر يبقى قاعد في بيته مثلا ويمتحن الكورس بتاعه وياخد الشهاده هتبقى صعبه شويه بالنسبه لنا في الفتره الحاليه بالاضافه ان البنيه التحتيه حتى بتاعتنا في الجامعات المصريه لسه فيها مشكله ان احنا لو قلنا عايزين نمتحن الطلبه كلهم في جامعه ما ايا كانت الجامعه حتى اكبر الجامعات المصريه هنلاقي مشكله في الشاجزه او الجهاز مش شغاله او عندنا مشكله في الانترنت عندنا مشاكل كتير لسه في البنيه التحتيه فاحنا لغايه دلوقتي يعني احنا نحاول بس ان احنا ندرس بالتعليم الالكتروني لكن الفاينل اكزام ده لازم يكون ورقي لحد كبير بأي كان شكل الاختبار ان شاء الله يكون بالسكانر نحاول ناخد اللي هو يكون اختبارات موضوعيه وهكذا بحيث ان الدنيا تبقى اسهل شويه لكن ان احنا نوافق على ان الطالب يمتحن في اي مكان بدون رقابه او بيكون اختبار غير مقنن بيبقى فيه شك شويه فاحنا حتى هذه اللحظه بيبقى صعب لان احنا انتوا عارفين يمكن بره ولا حاجه ممكن الطالب يكون باصص للكاميرا وفي برامج معينه تبين اذا كان هو بيغش ولا بيغش بيبص ولا بيبص ليها نظام بس احنا حتى هذه اللحظه ما وصلناش لهذا يعني التكنولوجي. Thank you Rami and uh, now I'd like to call uh, Iman Abu Al-Maali. Uh, she is associate professor electronic information for libraries in Sudan. And she'll be talking about NRANs and library consortia that was an effective and collaborative relationship. Um, and the last presentation, I hope that <laughs> my presentation is not boring. Uh, NRANs and library consortia towards an effective and collaborative relationship. Uh, that's, um, we have uh, the contents are reflecting the, uh, the title, is reflecting the title about Eiffel. We know about Eiffel as uh, an organization. NRANs, uh, their roles, services, challenges, and library consortia, their roles, services, and challenges. And the objective of the presentation is how to, uh, to get an effective and collaborative relationship between the two organizations. Uh, we start with Eiffel. Eiffel is, um, is electronic information for libraries. Uh, it works with libraries to enable access to knowledge for education, learning, research and sustainability, and sustainable community development. They work in, um, Eiffel works with in 54 developing countries, in transitional countries, uh, in Europe, Middle East, Asia, Pacific, Africa, Latin America, as you can see in the map. And uh, they have many programs. It's, uh, it's an, a non-profit non organization. It has uh, many programs like licensing programs, copyright, uh, library programs, open access, public library innovation, and the most uh, uh, well-known general assembly that gathers all the librarians from these countries and they learn from each other, they network and learn from each other. Uh, so, um, uh, the second point is about the errand. Uh, we all know that an NREN is uh, the National Research and Education Network. We have many, we have many presentations uh, uh, describing this, but it is it sometimes called an ISP for its member institutions. It provides many services, including connectivity between uh, university campus networks and to other NREN globally or regionally, and they provide advanced ICT services to its members. Um, there are other ways, other roles, as, as found in um, Michael Foley's report. He defined the services and other services. Uh, sorry, other services include uh, security and email service hosting. We'd like to focus on what benefits the libraries here is access to digital library resources and web hosting. But there are challenges, uh, also mentioned in many presentations. Uh, funding and uh, competition from telecom operators. This is in the developing countries only, uh, maybe. A lack of awareness among decision makers of how the internet works and what value added an MRIN can bring to higher education. This is very important in, in the Arab world and in Africa. Um, there are also challenges uh, concerning the relation to public policy priorities. 
and to adapt uh, to the new uh, encouraging technologies. Uh, now, we can go to library consortia and its definition. We know that uh, a library consortium is a group of libraries that work together to achieve common goals. It's a consortium, so they want to help its members to get some benefits. So roles and services include reduction in the cost of your resources, and uh, ability to negotiate favorable terms and conditions of use, expansion of services and resources, sharing of staff skills, capacity building, and increased effectiveness of advocacy for policy change. They have the IP coordinator, it's uh, intellectual property coordinator. In each country there should be one, in the university should be one, to help the researchers to understand uh, intellectual property issues. This is for example. And there are challenges facing the library. Uh, these challenges include, I quoted this from a presentation for Victoria Okoji from the Nigerian Emirate, or he works for IFLA, the, inter the, national, the international organization for libraries. And uh, he mentioned needs, but I consider them as challenges there. To provide effective access uh, to electronic resources, curate local intellectual property, facilitate research workflows, open access and open science as new trends. So um, I just wanted to, to, to go through this to reach the objective of our presentation, how to get an effective and collaborative relationship between the two organizations. So we need to put this into a map just to, to see what, is, uh, what are the similarities and what are the differences. The ultimate goal, the ultimate goal is supporting high, edu high quality education and research in the country. This, this is a goal for the two organizations. So they share the same goal, the ultimate goal, they share it, and they share the community members, they serve the same members, they serve the academic and research institutions, researchers, teachers, and students. So they have two issues to make them, they should collaborate, they should collaborate. So how we need to, to differentiate between the two uh, organizations, we would like to know what are the services provided the end rents and what are the needs of the library consortium. We start with the services provided by the NREN. <coughs> it's, it's everywhere. I, I searched the internet about this collaboration. I found one challenge. It's written everywhere in each report, in each uh, uh, research paper, is that connectivity. Libraries need connectivity. It's not only connectivity, but it's one of the most important services, connectivity, bandwidth, data center, and cloud services. This is the service provided by the NREN that is needed by the libraries. They need connectivity and bandwidth and reliably hosted repositories. And uh, the second is deployment of IP addresses. This is uh, always the service provided by the NREN to member institutions, and it is needed for the library consortium to provide electronic sources via the static IP addresses. And um, authentication, authorization, infrastructure, this is provided sometimes by the NRENs and needed, of course, for library, library consortium and many others. I just wanted to put the most important services and the most important needs. On the other hand, uh, there are needs for capacity building. In the library consortium and NRENs provide this training on ICT. Um, needs of NRENs and services provided by the library consortium. The NRENs, of course, need expansion of services and resources. In the previous presentations, we hear that it's not only connectivity, it's not only a network. There are services that should be there. So NRENs need expansion of services and resources, and this is provided, of course, by the library. These resources are provided. We need data traffic. We, just, we can't just put connectivity, okay, and just let it... Uh, empty, we need traffic on that, uh, cables. So uh, content services are provided by the library consortium and that a service for research collaboration. Researchers should work uh, in the right way. And this is provided by the librarians. They, look, they teach them about uh, intellectual capacity, give them the research tools. So there are needs and services in both sides. We can go from here to I'll skip this, it's barriers, it's just theoretical information that 
If you want collaboration, there are barriers in philosophy, inadequate understanding, hidden agendas, failure to communicate. Now we go to our practical steps for partnership between MRAN and library. We want to, be, to go practical. The first step is leadership. We need a leader who can take the initiative, form a team, and this team should be very small, members from the two organizations, that team, they, hold, uh, they have to hold meetings, but meetings should be documented with feedback to be good to, in, the, in the outcomes. And the outcomes of this stage is understanding, to understand the benefits, that the small team should understand the benefits of this collaboration and uh, defines roles, responsibilities, and puts a plan for the next stage. The next step is to get to bring more people, to, to bring people together, to call for, to involve the stakeholders, the vice chancellors, for example, board members and decision makers in the two organizations, and experts, of course. We need experts because we need outputs of this uh, 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 stage. Is uh, we have to define the vision, and the goals, and the structure and to develop the, uh, and define the protocols and communication structure and develop an MOU, any, any, any type of uh, legal document for this partnership after defining the TOR, the terms of reference. The third uh, point is implementation. This is where we can say, this is an effective and collaborative relationship. It can be unless we have clear and honest communication, sorry, clear and honest communication, transparency and trust. Uh, the last slide, <laughs> it's about, uh, I just has a, a very quick example, uh, Sudrin and the libraries, uh, it's, they started with shared goals to build institutional repositories in Sudan, the first institutional repositories, three, started with three and now there are 20, uh, to found this, the, the library consortium. So they started with uh, this team, with a leadership, and a small team, consisting of CEO of Sudrin, senior librarians, ICT directors, that was in 2011. And the meetings with documentation, feedback, set the goals. Then the shared goals goes to the second step, is founding the SARC, the Library Consortium, the NIS Academic Library Consortium. They involve the stakeholders, and the SARC now is registered organization under the umbrella of the Association of Sudanese Universities and NGO. And now ICT experts who were members of the Sudren are now in the SARC advisory committee. And if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This is an African program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wali, and thank you, uh, our speaker. Uh, so by this, uh, today we, we finish our uh, presentations, our sessions. There is, we are left with the uh, shareholders meeting for ASIL. It's open, you are invited. It will be at, uh, upstairs, maybe in 15 minutes from minutes time from now. But for tomorrow, I will be sharing with you a new agenda because some people did not show up. The other thing that, please, when you leave the room, take everything everything in, uh, for your, your belongings with you, because it will be used in uh, maybe at 7 o'clock, there, there will be another meeting, another activity. So don't leave anything uh, for you in this room. The other thing for tomorrow, please come with your badge. It will be easier for you to, to get in uh, the league uh, last, other, rather than to do the other, uh, Things. Uh, any other? Any yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, come with your badge tomorrow. If you don't have the badge, please take it uh, before you leave. And take all your belongings with you because this room will be used uh, used in uh, at seven. Uh, there's another active room. Another. Uh, Okay. So, for tomorrow we'll be starting at nine. So please be here at nine. Uh, we have a new. Uh, I will, as I said, 
simple to share a new <coughs> agenda with you. And uh, thank you for coming and uh, for your patience. I know people are tired from travel and from... Uh, so. Is IT around? Ah, so, uh, we have uh, <coughs> a new partnership with, uh, with uh, ITU. They are now, uh, we are members, official members of uh, academy, uh, academia in ITU. And for this purpose, we have uh, the pleasure to give a shield for ITU represented by our colleague, Karim Abdelani. So, Karim, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Turman, and for Ashton uh, for this uh, uh, plaque. We are uh, really delighted to have Ashton as an ITU member, ITU Academia member. Uh, I think earlier this year you registered uh, to, to, to be members, uh, and I hope that uh, Ashton reaps full benefits from becoming uh, members of the ITU as Academia. If you're not aware, ITU uh, has several uh, uh, membership categories. Uh, member states, uh, uh, sector members, which includes private sector companies and industrial organizations. And then in, in the past years, the, a third category was open for academia, uh, where academia institutions uh, globally can uh, become members of the ITU. Uh, special programs, special activities are catered towards academia, but in addition, academia gets full access to all of the ITU activities uh, globally. So we're happy that Ashton uh, is uh, one of the latest uh, academia members regionally, and we hope uh, more to follow in the coming years. Thank you. I need also, the reason behind the uh, joining ITU is that we want to collaborate also and how can we, can they support us in uh, pl the planning and implementation for the Arab Connect, which we already started the discussion uh, uh, early this year. Actually, that was December last year in Lebanon. Yes. I think, yeah. So they, they advised that we want, uh, it's better that we go for membership, this will give us better position for them also to support us. We are now exploring how we can work together in supporting the initiative and hopefully we will do something together. Thank you. Thank you.